Invisible audience. We are several weeks into this new year and I don't put a lot of stock into New Year's resolutions, but I do make them. I tend to keep them really vague and sort of open-ended and big picture kind of stuff, like be nicer to yourself because at the end of the year I can look back and be like, was I nice to myself? Yeah. Alright, cool. And one of my resolutions, and it's actually a resolution that I've recycled the past, like, few years because it's something that just sort of is nice and generally positive and something that I can continue to strive for, is to make more art. I'm not entirely sure what justifies more art, but it's nice and vague and pretty easy to accomplish. And the fact that I keep recycling this resolution for the past few years has made me stop and sort of look at it and, and think about it. Think about what it means. Why do I want to make more art? Why do I want to make art in general? What are my motivations for making art? Do my motivations have any bearing on the value of the art that I make? You can probably see the sort of thought spiral that I get myself stuck in, and for most of the questions that I ask, I don't really have an answer. But for that last one, I do. In my final quarter of university, I needed one extra class in order to graduate, so I figured, hey, I'll take something fun, do something different, something unusual, outside of my usual wheelhouse. I said usual too many times. I'm just gonna leave it. And I found this sound art class. And it sounded... Oh god. I can't do it. I can't do it. Sound art was something that I had absolutely no experience in and no idea. I had like no... Just no basis for anything coming into the world of sound art, and I thought that that would be interesting. And at first it was! The professor was a really cool dude, and the classes were really interesting, and it sort of made you think about sound, and like, the role that sound plays in art in a different way, and it was really cool, but then the professor had to leave due to family emergency reasons, and was replaced with, instead of a professor, an actual sound artist, who was much less cool. <laughs> he was much more focused on the theory of sound art and like the history of it and like the meaning behind it all and that's that was just so many readings that I did not do. So the class went downhill pretty steeply at that point but we still got to make stuff. Our final project was to create some kind of sound art piece of our own imagining and present it to the class and me as a joke, primarily, and also out of spite, created a project consisting entirely of silence. There was a little bit more to it than that. I went to a bunch of silent places and collected sound clips from those places and lined them up side by side so that you could see the differences between the silences and sort of calling attention to the fact that, like, silence isn't actually real and there's always some kind of sound going on and silences in different places are actually going to sound different and just blah 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 blah. It was very, very artsy, very lofty stuff um, that I did not care about at all. I was doing the project primarily as an excuse to be like, hey, here's my final. It's nothing. The guy teaching absolutely loved it. I got an A. But the thing is that that project that I created regardless of my motivations in creating it primarily out of spite, um, was still art. All the lofty explanations I was giving about what this project meant and why it was doing the things that it was doing, etc, etc, were still true. So when I look at my resolution to make more art and think about why it is that I want to do this, it doesn't really matter. My motivation for making things is going to vary depending on what I'm making. And art doesn't have to be deep or serious or lofty in order to be art. Art that you've made doesn't even have to be seen by anyone. It can be just a notebook that you keep by your bed and sometimes draw Phoenix Wright characters in and never show to anyone ever. As a completely fictional example, of course. If you find some kind of joy in making something or if you find some kind of satisfaction or you're doing it to be part of a community, or to share an idea, or just because you really like some character and you want to draw them a bunch, if you just want to just talk to a camera for a while, like, whatever it is that you're making, whatever purpose that it serves for you personally, whether it be because you like the way something looks and you want to recreate it, or just out of spite, that thing that you've created still exists. It's been made real. It's something that you have brought into existence in this world. Sometimes art does serve a purpose, and it is to express some kind of big idea or something important. But that doesn't mean that artwork that doesn't change your worldview in some way is not art. And if all you're making in this world is crappy YouTube videos, and as long as you are getting some value out of making that thing, it's worth it. It doesn't have to be popular or well-received. You think I make these videos for you? 
Trust me, if you liked these videos, I would know. So whatever reason or reasons, more likely it is that you want to make things, then that's a good reason to make things. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make more art. And I hope that you do too, invisible audience. Even if your art is invisible, because you are invisible. Hey, if you want some tips on invisible art, sound art is an invisible art. You can't see sound, so there's a good starting place for you, if you're interested. It can be interesting. It can also be awful. Pachoo, pachoo, pachoo. As terrible as that class ended up being, I do highly recommend trying new things like that, because it was whew, an experience and a half. And it was the half that almost killed me. Oh, buddy. I... I heard some things. Some... Some things I never want to hear again.